happy St George's Day everyone. <laughs> bit worrying that isn't it, because how can you possibly live up to an introduction like that? Well thank you very much Amja. And just having this event at all has caused a little bit of a stir, hasn't it? Labour called us hypocrites because Sage Gateshead has received some EU funding. <laughs> it's our money! Well, that's my speech. <laughs> I've got a question for them. Where do they think EU money comes from in the first place? Does it grow on trees? Or does it come from the £55 million pounds that we send each and every day across to the European Union in membership fees? £55 million pounds a day to an organisation that writes 75% of our laws. £55 million pounds from our taxes to an organisation whose red tape costs us jobs and which puts local people out of business. Well, just five years ago, we were only a couple of percent short of taking our first MEP seat here in the North East. We were a tiny party back then. In fact, our entire campaign budget for that North East campaign was about the same as the cost of putting on just this one event here at Sage Gateshead this evening. So many people, and one or two faces I see out in the audience tonight, have contributed to this year's campaign. But in particular, I'd like to thank Amjad Bashir, because Amjad has funded the cost of hiring this wonderful venue. So thank you to Amjad, who is, as ever, a true gentleman. Let me tell you a little bit about why I'm UKIP. I'm UKIP because I believe that society should reward and encourage those who work hard. I believe that those who are capable of working should always be better off in work than on benefits. I'm UKIP because I believe in an education system which incentivises hard work. You know, I think it's a scandal that more children from working class backgrounds went to Oxford and Cambridge in the 50s and 60s than do today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm UKIP because I believe in freedom. I believe that we, you and I, can spend our money better than the government can. I don't believe in state control of citizens. I don't believe in a European Union that has pumped out over three and a half thousand new regulations since 2010. So many that it would take you 92 days just to read them. I'm UKIP because unlike the political class in this country, I believe in something, I'm passionate about making this country a better place. And I don't believe that the Labour Party represents people who come from working class backgrounds like me. Let's talk a bit about immigration. Because there's so much nonsense put around about UKIP's policies. We're not saying we want to close our borders. We're not saying 
that we want to pull up the drawbridge. Like Nick Clegg said, whilst busy losing a debate against Nigel Farage. We're just asking for a little bit of good, old-fashioned common sense. Because the problem right now is that we have uncontrolled mass net immigration from 27 other European countries. With 4,000 new people a week coming from Europe. And often taking jobs on low wages, putting local people out of work. All we ask for is just to keep it under control. And then we're accused of scaremongering because we dare to say that 26 million unemployed people across Europe have the right to come to the UK. We're not saying that 26 million will come to the UK. But how can it be scaremongering when 900,000 UK jobs are being advertised on an EU jobs portal to citizens across Europe to come here and take those jobs? <laughs> what we want is to take in people with genuine skills Skills we lack. Skills that will benefit our economy. We want a simple, fair, points-based system, like Australia or Canada, to make sure that immigration, when it happens, actually benefits our country. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a popular policy. According to the recent Social Attitudes Survey, the vast majority of the British population share that view. UKIP talks about these issues that matter to the people. We don't sweep these issues under the carpet. We're not the career political elite. Labour swept this one under the carpet so much that when Labour was in power, we had four million arrivals to this country. The fact that we will talk about these issues honestly, fairly and openly is why UKIP continues to go up and up in the opinion polls. A few weeks ago, a poll splashed across the front of the journal showed UKIP on 31% of the vote in the north of England for the European elections. UKIP 31. Labour, 41. The Conservatives, the Liberal Democrats, no one. And then we had a council by-election in Sunderland, where UKIP took over 28% of the vote in a seat that UKIP hadn't contested before. In one of the safest Labour seats in the country, we cut their majority to under 400. And then just a week ago, and yesterday, we've had two more opinion polls showing there's just 4% behind Labour because we're closing the gap on Labour and they are running scared. <laughs> UKIP are now the only true challengers to Labour in the North East. No one has ever dared challenge them before in their heartlands, and we're doing it now. These are working class areas where the Conservatives just aren't trusted, and where the Lib Dems, well, the Lib Dems have Nick Clegg. <laughs> so Labour just don't know how to react. Not caring whether it's true, not wanting to be paid the facts, they've started to sling mud at us and spread one scared story after another about UK. So let's take a look at some of their claims. 
Labour claim that UKIP stands for tax rises for the poor. We're the party that stands up for hard working people. We stand for no tax on minimum wage. They don't tell you that, do they? And we've stood for that since 2009. In this campaign, they've accused us of not standing up for human rights. Well, I believe that this country has led the way in championing the cause of true human rights, in standing up for democracy, in ending injustice. In fact, we're the country that gave those fundamental freedoms eight centuries ago at Magna Carta. We stand for true people's rights. We don't stand for criminals' rights, however. Then we go to the bizarre claims from Labour. They claim we want to stop workers from having paid holidays. Pure fantasy. They claim we want to take money from state schools and give it to Eton. Pure fantasy. They claim we want to privatise the NHS. Pure fantasy. It's Labour who introduced PFI. It's Labour who sold off bits of the NHS. It's UKIP who opposed them. So you tell me who's really the party of messing about with our free NHS. It's just one fantasy after another from Labour. They've never been threatened before in the North East. So they are resorting to the most vicious of scare tactics and lies. They've taken their voters for granted. People have been voting Labour for many years in the North East. We've had Labour councils. We've had Labour governments. And we've got the highest levels of unemployment and, depri and, and deprivation in the land. Albert Einstein once said, that the definition of madness is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. <laughs> but you know, these elections are totally about the issues that I've mentioned. Because the European elections are a single issue election. They're about one thing, and one thing only. Do you want to be governed by Europe? Or do you want to be good neighbours with Europe? Trading freely, not just with Europe, but with the rest of the world. The Liberal Democrats make much of what I call the three million jobs myth. I'm sure you've heard it. They claim that three million British jobs depend on trade with the European Union. But the fact is that outside the European Union, we would keep every single one of those jobs. Because we would be guaranteed by treaty to have a free trade deal with the European Union. But let's stop and think for just one moment about how ridiculous that myth actually is. Between three and four million British jobs depend on trade with non-EU countries. Do those jobs disappear because we're not governed by China or America or India? Of course they don't. Because it's in our interest to do business with them and it's in their interests to do business with us. If only we could free those businesses from EU red tape and let them be competitive, they would thrive and we'd have more trade with those non-EU countries. Not only would they thrive, but so would the 95% of British businesses who don't trade outside this country at all anyway. 
See, the Lib Dems have peddled that three million jobs myth so many times that people start to fall for it. But it's just not true. They claim that Britain has influence in the European Union. What is that influence when we have no say at all in the World Trade Organization because we're members of the EU? What is that influence when Britain has opposed 55 measures in the Council of Ministers and every single one of those 55 has become law in this country anyway? What is that influence when year on year our voting power goes down and more and more power goes to Brussels? Ladies and gentlemen, I suggest we don't have true influence in Europe anyway, and I suggest that's yet another Lib Dem myth. <laughs> so, in the end, it comes down to this. You have a choice. If you're pro-European Union, you can choose your flavour of pro-European Union party. You can vote Labour, you can vote Conservative, you can vote Lib Dem, you can even vote Green. But if you think that the avalanche of European Union regulation that is hitting British businesses has gone too far, if you think that £55 million pounds a day in membership fees to the European Union that no one asked for is too much, well then, ladies and gentlemen, there is only one show in town, and that show is UK. Thank you.